A new Wordle puzzle is online. Click on the link to play. Listening to the following video may give you clues. Please like and share the videos. Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange, Infinity War. Sam Raimi's dull entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a dull one. What's even worse is that it's full of heavy metal silliness. But I won't spoil it for you. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the main characters, from Chris Hemsworth's Hawkeye to Rachel McAdams' Christine Palmer. Sam Raimi's dull entry. Sam Raimi has gone from horror film director to outer, and this latest installment of the Marvel Cinematic Universe is no exception. Directed by Sam Raimi, the film devils in her moods, including a minus 13 rating for the lowest rated film. However, there are plenty of reasons why Marvel Entertainment should have avoided Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange sequel. The film is not as fun as its predecessors, but it is still a solid entry in the franchise. Fans of Sam Raimi's first Spider-Man trilogy will probably love the movie, and those who enjoyed his earlier works will surely appreciate the references to his her work. The film also features Raimi's cameo as the villain in a spooky scene involving the villain of the film. And it's not just a horror flick. Raimi's eerie aesthetic is on display in the climax of the film, and it's a bleak way to introduce a new character into the MCU. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness may be Sam Raimi's first superhero film since the trilogy's Spider-Man movies. The film opens nationwide on May 6, 2022, and reviews for it have been mixed. But you can see a trailer and a review after the jump. And don't forget to share this review on social media to let others know what you think of it. In the first Doctor Strange movie, Raimi praised Derrickson and felt the character left the film in a good place. As a result, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness looks to be an important MCU film in the future. In the Spider-Man series, the Loki episode triggered an event that unlocked the multiverse and opened the way for Doctor Strange to travel. This event will allow Doctor Strange to travel to multiple parallel worlds, where he'll need to team up with both new and old allies. Doctor Strange may be Marvel's scariest movie in years. It is the closest Marvel film to horror. The director injects a fantastic sense of menace into the movie, but his other films have failed to connect with the audience in the way Raimi has done in the past. While Raimi's Doctor Strange movies are more exciting, they are not as effective as his first efforts. Sam Raimi's heavy metal silliness. While Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange isn't without its share of heavy metal silliness, the film does offer some genuinely memorable scenes. This third act is particularly wacky, but it's also a riot. The visual quirks and general cheesins are all very recognizable and add to the film's fun. It's a moment that sums up Raimi's entire career, as it does a whole host of Marvel characters, and it's a masterful subversion of fan service expectations. The film is fun, ridiculous, and refreshing. Whether or not fans will cheer for the final installment depends on your taste, but it's worth a shot. But be warned. Raimi won't be for everyone. The style of the film is still noticeable and resembles that of his work on the first Spider-Man movie. It's also easy to see that Raimi doesn't care much about Stephen Strange. He is more interested in Wada Maximoff, the film's villain. Elizabeth Olsen is a standout as Maximoff. It's a shame, though, that she has to be pushed aside in this sequel. In a world of alternate Earths, Doctor Strange is uncomfortable with it. A dimension-hopping teen named America Chavez has her own powers, which becomes a plot mechanism in this film. The movie moves between the realities, as Doctor Strange and his team must dodge a host of uncanny forces and other threats while traversing between alternate versions of themselves. Nonetheless, the film does offer an excellent, satisfying journey through the interdimensional realms. Rachel McAdams, Christine Palmer in a new trailer for the upcoming Marvel Studios film Doctor Strange, Infinity War, actress Rachel McAdams plays the third night nurse, Christine Palmer. Christine is from a Midwestern suburb, but her connection to Doctor Strange is uncertain. She might be an interdimensional interest or a disguise. Either way, she's a welcome addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. During the movie, we get a glimpse of how Christine Palmer is different from her normal self. As a kind, compassionate woman, she puts others before herself. She helps Stephen Strange after he's been injured, and is the only person who can challenge his arrogance. 
Christine is compassionate and brave, but she's also a strong person. In the next installment of the series, Strange and America enter the multiverse to confront the most dangerous threat in the multiverse, the Illuminati. Along the way, they meet alternate versions of Strange, a version of his wife Wanda, and even the Illuminati, a team of Avengers-level superhumans who live in parallel universes. In addition, they encounter alternate versions of other Marvel characters. So the movie has a strong cast, including Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, and Kachit Gomez. Benedict Wong is an old hand in this genre. Chiwetel Ejiofor has a small role, and Rachel McAdams' Christine Palmer is a standout. In a way, the movie is a worthy addition to the McQuiff movie also features a lot of new character posters. In one poster, half of Benedict Cumberbatch's face is covered with red energy. Another poster features Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch. Another poster features Chiwetel Ejiofor as Master Mordo. There are also posters for other characters, including Wong and America Chavez. The film's sequel could be equally as big of a movie as the original. It would be a perfect sequel to Marvel's best-selling comic book. The film opens in theaters on November 4, Loki's variant of He Who Remains. The story opens in the universe of LAMENTIS-1, where Loki and Sylvie meet a woman known as Miss Minutes. Miss Minutes is the creation of the timekeeper, He Who Remains. After a multiversal war, He Who Remains has created the as a result of the war. He Who Remains offers Loki and Sylvia choice, kill him, or cause a multiversal war. After the variant pleads to Sylvie, she is sent back to the TVA headquarters. He Who Remains is a fictitious character that appears in Loki's season finale. He is the ruler of the TV and is amused to find two Loki variants standing together. He calls Loki by his moniker and invites him into his elevator. Loki expresses surprise that the temp pad is actually a human. However, the temp pad possesses many powers that are essential for Loki and Sylvie to survive. During the first episode, he who remains invites Sylvie and Loki to his office, where he calls both of them Loki. After the conversation, both men accept the offer of coffee and take their seats. He comments on how long the journey has been and mentions pain. Then, both of them take turns reincarnating. The question of whether they will let Sylvie and Loki decide their fates is left up to the reader of time. Twisters are a variant of He Who Remains. They are created by He Who Remains, the final director of the Time Variance Authority. They are the ultimate creators of timekeepers. These beings are responsible for all time travel in the universe. It is possible that the Time Twisters were once able to travel to the past and change the present. While it is not clear yet whether the sequel will feature Loki, the season 1 finale of the Marvel series was a huge event, with massive spoilers. Jonathan Majors was the newly nominated actor playing Kong the Conqueror in the first season.